Okay, so this is a, a joint mobility sequence. Go through all the joints in the body and I've tried to tailor it to be specific to what we are planning to cover over the next two days. Um, I'll talk a little bit more later about the, the program for the rest of the day, but this is what it's about. It's all about joint preparation. Um, the buzzword at the moment in the industry is mobility training. We call it limbering. None of this is any strong movement, but it's just to feel and test how your joints feel. Do they feel nice? Do they feel fluid? Is there any restrictions in any of the joints around your body? Because the very last thing you want to do is start adding weight, even just body weight, on top of poor joint mobility or point, poor joint conditioning. We'll talk a little bit more about that afterwards. Okay? So that's what I mean by mobilization, just going through all the joints in the body and seeing how they all feel and function, or perhaps they don't. Okay? We'll find that out. So just standing comfortably on your legs. Legs a little bit bent if that's comfortable for you. We're going to basically work from the neck down. A lot of this is very basic stuff, so let's just start with some forward and backward movements of the head and neck. Flexion and extension. We'll just probably do five, six, seven of each of these movements. Start nice and slow, just so you can get maximum sensory feedback. How does it actually feel? When you take the head and neck back, keep the jaw a bit relaxed. Don't clench the teeth together. Most people find that more comfortable. Right from the get-go, pay some attention to breathing. Are you breathing comfortably? And any movement, start small scale, and then you want to increase the range of movement to the limit of the joints. There's no real load, so it should be quite gentle. Key thing is, how does it feel in your body? Okay, and then just pause in the upright position. Simple neck rotation. For many people, this is a restricted movement. This is obviously the first left-right movement. So is there any difference in range, in feeling, one direction versus the other? For the neck movements, you don't have to keep the shoulders really strictly still and pulled down or anything like that. None of this should feel forced or indeed particularly strong. So just feel for any left-right differences. Now keep going and start to put a little bit more effort into this. There's a real strength element to neck rotation work. Are you still breathing comfortably? Good. Okay, and then pause in the middle position. A little bit of a lifting the chest and pull the head back as though there was a wall behind you and the skull's on the wall, just to exaggerate the position of the head in relation to the shoulders, and then pure side bending. Try not to let the head rotate at all, just side to side. A good visualisation is you've got a mirror in front of you, and some of you do. Try to keep the whole of your face in view. That's a good test as to whether you're cheating the movement a little bit by twisting away from the pure lateral flexion. Again, any noticeable left-right difference in this neck movement. If it's a very, very strong movement for you, and often it is, I find, let the shoulders move around a little bit. You don't have to keep them really strongly pulled down. Conversely, if you want a stronger sensation, then you can actively pull the shoulder that you're bending the head away from down. Everything is scalable. Good. Okay, pause in the middle. Now we're going to try moving the head forward and backwards on the skull, or the skull forward on the neck, I should say. So this one looks really weird, don't worry about that. How much can you protract the head forward and then retract? Full movement. Good. When you do the retraction, also think about just a little gentle chest lift. Lift the chest as much as you can. And this is one of the spinal alignment things that we'll do later on, actually positioning the head and neck as we hold a particular spinal alignment. Good. Do you have that range of movement? Is that coordination there? When I first tried to do this, my head just didn't move like that. I couldn't do it, no matter how much I tried. Good. Okay, and now, just four or five in each direction, full neck circles where you're incorporating side bend, full forward bend, side bend through the other shoulder, and then as comfortable as you are happy with, taking the head into extension and adding that circle. 
let the shoulders and indeed the upper part of the ribs move around a little bit so that as you come past the ear touches the shoulder can you get the chin to touch right through to the sternum and along each collarbone so full neck circle is what we're going for here and then reverse go the other direction and don't be surprised if it feels different one direction to the other part of that i think is a coordination thing Keep the jaw a bit relaxed and open when you go back. Good. In terms of speed, I like to do everything quite slowly, just to really feel as much as possible. But there's no reason you couldn't progress any of this to a little bit more of a flow, tiny bit more speed involved. Okay, and then just pause and wriggle around a little bit. So super gentle, easy stuff. Now we're going to move down into the shoulder girdle, but actually pay particular attention to the movement of the scapula, the two shoulder blades there. So first of all, just very simple alternating up and down. Call that elevation and depression. So yeah, you're lifting the shoulder up, but imagine the shoulder blades being moved around via movement of the shoulder girdle. Of course, the scapulae are part of the shoulder girdle. Notice also, I'm adding little kind of lateral flexions through the upper rib cage here and put particular attention into what is producing the movement when you lift a shoulder up it should be the traps that are in, in contracting to lift up and then when you go down pull down it's the muscles that form the armpits so pecs and lats that are doing that movement so you're not just standing there kind of wriggling around you're trying to feel what muscles are producing the movement and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute all right, and now pause, and now we'll do both at the same time. So strongly shrug the shoulders up, contract, contract, really feel the contraction happening in the traps, and then the opposite. What are you using to pull the shoulders down and the shoulder blades? And just do that a few times. So try and get a strong contracting force happening. And some people find if they extend the wrist and imagine they're pushing down onto a table, that gives them better connection to the pecs and the lats to pull down. Okay. Do that two or three more times. Really try and feel the contraction of the shortening muscles and then they relax or they need to relax to allow you to pull the shoulders down. Do two more of those. Good. Does it feel the same left to right? Get the same amount of feedback left to right. Good. Okay. Now, hold your fingertips on your thighs to try to remind you not to let the arms move around. And now we're going to do protraction or letting the shoulder blades draw apart and then retraction, really try and pull them together behind you. So keep the fingertips on the legs so you're not tempted to just move the arms around. This is all about the shoulder blades. Can you pull them apart? Can you strongly draw them together? And clearly there's a structural limitation there when they get pulled together. So do that a few more times. Don't worry too much about what the head and neck is doing. Keep going a few more times. Now, as well as retracting, also try and pull the shoulder blades down behind you. And these are all cues that we'll use when we do our pushing and pulling work this afternoon, trying to work out which muscles position the shoulder blades against the action that we'll do, which might be chin-ups or rowing or pushing of some sort. Good. So does everyone have some feeling there? They can feel what's happening, the movement of the shoulder blades. Yep. So you guys are quite experienced, but lots of people, they don't feel anything when they first start these things. As much this is just about increasing their body awareness, the feeling from certain parts of their body. Okay, now moving into some circles, and you're going for full movement, elevation, protraction, pulling down, pulling back, as big a circle as you can. Let the upper rib cage get involved as well. Does it feel fluid? Is there any part of that circular movement that feels a little bit crunchy or restricted in any way? And then reverse, go backwards. When you're going backwards, really think about pulling around. I'm getting quite a sensation all through the front of the abs here, through the waist. So there's a bit of a focus in each movement on a particular joint, but then we want to progress to more whole body movements. And we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so super simple stuff. 
Now let's go into the elbows and wrists and then we'll come back to more shoulder stops. Arms out to the front and you're simply flexing and extending the elbow joints. There's absolutely no load here apart from the weight of your forearms, which is in my case not very much. So don't be afraid to really press the elbows straight. How are you going to do handstands loaded up if your elbows don't straighten fully? And um, if just this basic movement is uncomfortable. Now keep going, but I've got my palms facing the ceiling. It's a very slight different rotation around the elbow joints. And then a little movement so that whether you're flexing or extending the palms facing the floor. And now speed it up a little bit. It's almost like you're really flossing into the joint. So just doing that basic movement, do your elbows feel happy about this? If not, just make a little note. A lot of this kind of warm-up stuff can be used to interrogate your body. Is there any potential, there's a little bit of a problem in any of these joints that you need to work on at some point? Good. Okay, pause here. Elbows are pressed straight. And now add as much movement as you can around the wrists. My fingers are extended, so I've got that nice long lever. Are your elbows pressed straight? I'm seeing a few bent elbows. So think about a handstand. You don't only need straight elbows, you need to be able to get at least 90 degrees of extension of the wrist joint in order to comfortably do the movement. Hold here. Add some little windscreen wipers. So you're actively extending the wrist, push the heels of the hands out to the front, and add this movement. And you might also find that your shoulders are getting a bit of a warm-up, just holding the arms out to the front here. Okay, come back here. Let's do full flexion now with a strong closed fist. Really feel the muscles pump up in the forearms here, and then relax. And again, we'll do a whole hanging sequence this afternoon, which will progress to rowing and chin-ups, that kind of thing. So you need to get the feeling of being able to really grip and... Um, flex the wrists. Good. Add some little windscreen wipers in this position. Try and get a real pump happening there. Feel what it's like for the muscles to be maximally contracting. And then let it relax and shake out. Make sure you've got enough room because you can have your arms out to the sides now. And do some circles around your elbows. So the elbow is principally designed to just bend and straighten. But a lot of the kind of work you'll be doing, you need a little bit of mobilization, freedom of movement in the ranges beyond just that bending and straightening. Same for the knee joint as well. So this is just a little circular movement. And then speed it up, really try and get it flowing and feel how the elbows feel just doing that. Go the other way. Is there any noise coming from the joints? Yeah. Any sticking points? Good. Okay, pause with the arms out to the side now. Fully extend the wrist and really strongly press the heels of the hands out behind you and just feel what you feel. For me, I feel a lot of sensation coming all the way through the arms, down into the forearms. Do some little internal, external rotation with that full wrist extension. Can you press the fingers straight? Very often people kind of curl the fingers to avoid the full neural component. We know all the ways to cheat, so we point those out. Now do the opposite full flexion with a strong grip, internal, external rotation, and make the movement bigger now in the shoulders. Good. Are you still breathing comfortably? Flexing the wrists, strongly closing the fists. Elbows stretch. Okay, come down, shake out. All right, one at a time, just hold the medius part of your forearm and do some wrist circles. And feel how it feels in the wrist, but this is just a tactile cue for you to feel what muscles are working there in the forearms, just to produce the curl. Very often what we say in the first few monkey gym classes is what we're really teaching you is body awareness, the feeling of your body. How should it feel? How does it feel? That sort of thing. So using the tactile cues like this, 
do you feel that you're instantly aware of what's actually working versus just curling the wrist in free space? Do the other side. Have you got any crunching in the wrists doing circles? Or any kind of, for me there's a, a feeling of things moving around in the forearm. So little adhesions there, a lot of tension held in the forearms. So that might be a little bit of a clue that you need to do some softening work for the forearms. And also look out for any left-right differences. Okay, shake out. All right, arms out like this. We did the lifting and pulling down of the shoulders before. Let's repeat that now in this arms to the front position. So using the traps to strongly shrug and then pull down. That's it. Now, as well as pulling down, pull back a little bit. Elbows are still straight. So you're working out how you can position the shoulder blades with the arms out to the front. And now, pull down, pull back, and add as though you were doing a rowing movement. And go back and just do a few of those. Because we're going to do a whole segment on rowing this afternoon. So this is practicing the movement. Very often what happens when people row, as soon as they start to bend the elbows, shoulders are up like this. Shoulder blades are not positioned well. They're not stable, in other words. So just practice it here. Pull down, pull back, and then think about pulling the elbows behind you. Let's do three more of those and add a full grip as though you're holding your body's weight hanging from a set of rings, which you'll be doing this afternoon. Good. Pull the shoulders down. That's the key thing. Don't let them pop up as you add the rowing movement. Good. All right. Now we'll just do a bit of swinging. Move around. To start off with no real forces involved, I'm just swinging. Notice the rest of my body is staying quite still. It's, not, it's the pure exploration of the movement of the arms in the shoulder joints in this particular plane, forwards and backwards. Breathing comfortably. Try to keep the head and neck still. A bit of a tendency to kind of thrust forward to make yourself think that you're a bit more flexible in the shoulders. Don't do that. Just the shoulder movement. Good. Okay, now put a bit more effort pulling down and then just let them float up in return. Again, this is scalable. If this amount of force is too much, then back it off. Working out what kind of forces your shoulders can handle. Good. Okay, now the opposite. Just let them come down and then pull them up and stop them at the top. Pull them up and stop them at the top. This one's a nice warm-up ahead of doing your handstand work because that is the kind of line you're going for. Stop. Nice straight line through there. All right, now just pause, hold here, and do some little lateral movements. I'm going to pull it down more into the body now. Step the feet a bit wider if you want. To begin with, I'm not letting my hips move left to right. I'm trying to get the movement from the waist upstream through to the lats a little bit. See how that feels. Bend the knees if that feels more comfortable in your lower back. Okay, then pause and try to just do some movements of your whole rib cage. Think about it being around this band here. Now, I've been working a lot on this kind of stuff because before this didn't move. I was flexible, but I couldn't actually move the rib cage at all. Those movements just weren't in my body. So, can you, standing here, Get your ribs to move. It looks ridiculous, don't worry about that. Well, actually, it can look quite beautiful if you can do it fluidly. <laughs> yeah. You can do it slow. You can get the um, hips a little bit involved now. Good. Plus, you're warming up the shoulders just by holding the arms up above your head. Good. All right, down they come. All right, now let's go down into the pelvis. We talk a lot about pelvic manoeuvring and pelvic positioning in the monkey gym system. We do in stretch therapy as well. So bend the knees, use a tactile cue of fingers and thumb on the hips there. Keep your chest lifted, and now you're simply trying to tuck the tail using the glutes, and then untuck the tail. So anterior and posterior tilting of the pelvis. So use the tactile cues to of the hands to feel what the pelvis is doing. 
how much range of movement do you have? Knees are bent so that the straight knees doesn't impede the tucking action. Very often people are very tight through this line and when the knees are pressed straight, they simply cannot tuck the tail. So bend the knees to get the feeling of the movement. How much untuck can you do? How much can you stick the bum out and really get a full arch happening in the lower back? And how does that feel? Totally scalable to you. Marcus is doing a different tactile cue, which works better for some people. Hand on the lower abdomen, other hand in the lumbar spine. And then straight away you can feel that the tilt of the pelvis will control the curve in the lower back. That's the key aspect of it. Good. All right, just pause in the kind of center position. Lift your chest a little bit, and we'll get to that in a minute. Pull the head back into the plane of the shoulders. Close your eyes and just feel the weight in your feet in a front to back sense. Try and organize yourself so that weight's pretty even, heels, midfoot, ball of the foot. Now maintain that weight through the feet and resume your pelvic tilting, tucking and untucking, and try not to let the weight move forward and backwards in the feet. It's just a little bit stricter. It's a pure tilting of the pelvis. No thrusting of the pelvis forwards and backwards. Breathe comfortably. And now that you're warmed up, make that movement as big as you can. Strong tuck, strong untuck. Are you aware that some of the deep abdominal muscles underneath the hand on the front there is getting involved in that tuck as well? All right, go back to hands here. Start with the pelvis in quite an untucked position, so you've got that arch in the back, and then add some side-to-side -side movements with the pelvis untucked. So now we're trying to feel for all sorts of things being pulled on through the outer part of the hips, maybe around into the smaller, higher glute muscles. Just feel how that feels. And start to make it as big a movement as you can in a left-right sense with the tail untucked. So do you feel something? Do you feel all sorts of things through the outer part of the hips, down through the outer part of the legs? Getting involved there? Yep. Good. Okay, pause. Strong tucked position and repeat and see whether there's different sensations to be felt all around. We just generally call it the waist area. You can variously do this with the knees very straight or quite bent. It will change the main sensations. All right, now just turn it into some circles. Super duper easy. I always like to start slow because I find if you go quickly, you kind of scoot past the bits where you actually need it to get a bit of a, a pull happening. So nice and slow. You can have the chest lifted throughout or you can let the whole body get involved. Up to you. There's no exactness to any of these movements. Go the other way. Any little clicking? Clicking? Someone's doing it, just did something over there. <laughs> yeah. Just as a teaching point, often students get very worried about those kind of noises. It's like, oh, something bad's going to happen. As long as there's no pain associated with it, it's just a noise largely. And you're moving slowly, there's no load happening here, so no problem. Good. Okay, wriggle around. All right, let's get involved in a bit of twisting. I'm going to start with my feet quite planted, and I'm just going to start a very gentle twisting movement like this. We'll do some different things with the arms in a minute. So this is super gentle, no great force involved pulling you around, just swinging. How does it feel? Try to get the head and neck involved as well, as long as that doesn't make you feel dizzy. I've got my knees a little bit bent. Have them as wide as you need to, so you feel nice and stable. All right, now start to put a little bit more effort into it. I'm really pulling myself around now, and I'm letting the trailing legs heel come up so I can get a bit more twist happening through the pelvis potentially right down through the line of the quads as well. Good. 
Okay. Now just look to the front. We're going to add some arm movements across the body like this, coming all the way around, all the way around. Big movement. Bigger movement as you can. Reach the arm out behind you, pull it across the body, reach it off the body, one at a time. Yeah, watch out for people around you. Keep going, but add a little bit of flexion through the middle back. Feel how you can get quite a strong pull across the shoulder blade area. Big movement, really reach out, reach right off the body. Have that reaching arm go at different heights each time. Low, shoulder height, a bit higher. Start to really drive off the legs now. Make it a big movement, whole body. Keep breathing comfortably. All right, now reverse the arm. This time the arm's going to come across the body, palm facing the ceiling. And we're going to deliberately think about really lifting the chest. So it's a big open movement through that whole front line, through the hip flexors, abdomen, upper ribs in particular. Now make it a big movement, really sweep the arm. Balletic, that's how graceful you look. Good. Try different heights with that arm going around. Good. Really pull it around, feel that big pull across the chest, biceps, whole thing. A few more there. Big fluid movement. Just put your attention into the whole chain from the front of the ankle right through the leg, abdomen, ribs, chest, front arm line. Does it all open out for you? Good. Okay, pause. Get your breath back. Do you notice you get a little bit puffed? Do you just forget to breathe comfortably when you're doing that? I do anyway, plus I'm talking. All right, now you, it's your time to explore putting all of that stuff together. So it might not look like me, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do all sorts of flowing movements, arms, hip circles, side bending, whatever you can. Just try and think as much fluidity through all of this as you can possibly have. Off you go. Move around. You don't have to stay fixed on the one spot. Move your mind's attention to different parts. So this one I'm thinking about shoulder circles. Now I'm thinking about moving the ribs as much as I can. Then I'm thinking about the hips and the pelvis. Good. And we'll just do another 30 seconds or so of that. Try and invent new movements that you've never done with your body before. Yeah, little hip <laughs> salsa dancing, whatever works for you. Incorporate the neck as well. That's the end of the spinal column. Let's go for a little bit longer. Keep your teeth closed and focus on breathing comfortably only through your nostrils. Try and get your breathing completely under control. And then stop. Just wriggle around. 